Mm. We are live. So whatever you want to do an intro. Live to the back end. Live to the back end. Hello, back end. <laughs> Tightly sex um, name. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. So a brand new tag team debuted on this week's edition of NXT. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk NXT podcast edition, podcast edition of the podcast thing that we do. I'm El Fekid Olo Blake. Chopper Pete Quinnell is with me. I'm trying to work out which way I have to point to get to him. It's like is this that way. way or and you're that I'm way. That, I'm that way, yes. Yeah, so yeah, we got there yeah. in the end. Um, and yeah, so it was a really weird show of NXT this week, as has been most of wwe recently yeah but yeah. matches did happen and that is an important fact to take into account is the fact that we actually got quite a lot of matches on this week's show not many of which last more than about three minutes but you know <laughs> you, you take what you can get in these yeah. troubled times one of the main matches that happened on this week's nxt was matt riddle versus roderick strong i like the fact that on the commentary they had reasons why uh Matt Riddle couldn't be joined by his tag, co-tag team champion, Broserweight's mate, Bruiserweight, Pete Dunn. They were like, he's got family to deal with, so he's flown back to mm -hmm. the UK, we're assuming, to be with his family while the coronavirus stuff is going on. Not so much for Roderick Strong. Adam Cole seems is pretending he's on <laughs> vacation. Uh, Roddy just comes out alone. It's like the Undisputed Era is now the isolation era. It's Roddy on his own. <laughs> and that's all it is. Um, but at the end of this match, and it was it was actually a pretty damn good match for a, a show where mm. everything else was basically squashes. Um, at the end of this match, Riddle wins, uh, picking up a he gets a bro Derek off sort of a weird. Roderick Strong seems to do a cartwheel. And gets caught in a bro, Derek. Yeah, I don't know. Just just doing a shout out to the War Raiders. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll do some cartwheels. It's Props fine. to you guys, Hanson, or whatever you call now. <laughs> Ivar? Ivar, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, Ivar, don't care. Um, oh, yeah. And he, so then he he's, as he's celebrating, two huge guys jump him from behind and start beating him down. They hit uh, basically all of the authors of Payne's old moves, essentially. <laughs> big splash in the corner. I know big boot. It's big guy stuff. Um, but they look pretty dominant. They, they smashed Riddle down. And then Malcolm Bivens comes out mm -hmm. to introduce himself and semi-introduce us to the new tag team. They're not named. Uh, Bivens says that basically he wanted to take this opportunity while Pete Dunne was away to come out and introduce Riddle to the future of the NXT tag division. Peter, mm. who are these lads? So apparently, according to the internet, uh, these two lads are called Rinku Singh and Saurav Gurja. Probably butchered both of those names, but that's okay. Uh, and yeah, being managed by Malcolm Bivens, aka Stokely Hathaway, uh, beforehand. Uh, and yeah, like you said, they came in and just did a bunch of big lad move stuff. There was, you know, the backbreaker going into the stump kind of thing off the corner. There was big splashes and them going, etc. Um, they did look pretty cool. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. Like you said, the, the first thing that came to mind was the Authors of Pain, because to me, that's just the obvious comparison. Two big lads who do big, bulky, big, beefy moves. Mm -hmm. Big, beef, lads, big. They did a lot of that. And then uh, he said, this is going to be the new tag team in the NXT tag team division. For me, I think this was probably supposed to happen after TakeOver. They were probably yeah. supposed to debut after the NXT tag team championship match, but they've just moved it forwards now that TakeOver is not happening. Uh, which we'll be talking about in a little bit about takeover not happening and the ramifications of that. Um, but I think they, they looked pretty cool. It's nice to have a new tag team in the division because we, we actually got a few different uh, teasers of new teams uh, through this episode as well. Obviously you had uh, Lorcan and Birch taking on Shane Thorne and the other lad that I always forget his name. Oh, uh, no, I've got it written Vink, down. Hang Vink, on. Vink. Something yeah, Vink, isn't it? Brendan Vink. Brendan Vink. That's it. Yeah, the smiling uh, Australian knobhead. <laughs> it's like it's like a walking Foster's advert. He's like literally those guys. Like, hooroo. Um, so he was. He's got a punchable face. Yes, which, which is, is brilliant. Great which character. is brilliant yeah. for who he's being. Really good. Yeah. So we we had that tag team, Thorn and Vink, who were on Raw as well, mm. uh, going up against Lorcan and Birch, and then you had Roddy Strong, obviously undisputed era, and the Bros awaits, and now you've got this new tag team here as well. It's starting to become a bit more of a fleshed out division now because it was a bit stale mm -hmm. for quite a long time when era were champions. So I'm happy to see these guys here. I don't really know their you know their capabilities. I've not seen them wrestle elsewhere. They seem like very much kind of performance center bred guys. Um, but I don't. I, I think 
the like we, we've already mentioned it twice the immediate comparison is with the authors of pain and i think the authors of pain started out as being kind of like oh these guys are a bit green they're a bit they don't mm-hmm. really know what they're doing too much but by the end of their run in nxt they were great they were fantastic when they became nxt tag team champions they were just running rush across the whole division and we were mm-hmm. all like yes please do more of it so I think they could be really good. Uh, and obviously, Stokely Hathaway, Malcolm Bivens, is a, a great mouthpiece uh, in general. So I'm hoping that he can kind of bring them to that next level. Kind of, the, he's the Paul Ellering of this, uh, mm. this situation. So he'll well, probably like- get, he'll probably get, uh, you know, thrown to the side as soon as they go to the main roster. Yeah, well, that's the weird thing, isn't it? Because it's like when when you had Paul Ellering and the Authors of Pain, I feel like they, as a unit, had a look and a vibe. And I feel like mm. uh, Malcolm Bivens and these guys don't necessarily gel in that way. And I feel like we've also yeah. literally just had uh, the Robert Stone brand. And this feels mm. like another version of that happening yes. weeks down the line. It, 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 you know, and it, yeah, okay, well, it's an amendments division. Big whoop. Like I was assuming, the, I was kind of assuming the Robert Stone brand was going to accumulate other women and other men on the roster and become this like bigger force. But then now we've got Malcolm Bivens also sort of, running a a crew of people and i wonder if they're going to do the same thing where he starts to accumulate it and it becomes maybe it becomes faction war down the line between bivens mm. and stone and it's uh they're doing like apple versus pc or something <laughs> <laughs> i'm a bivens and <laughs> <laughs> there's only one way to, to solve this war game <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. be great um, yeah, I, I think that's totally possible. But yeah, it does seem very similar to have a lad in a suit trying to recruit people, and then mm-hmm. another lad in a suit comes out to be like, "These are my guys." Yeah, it's uh, it's not great to it's have that. Well, to, to have two back to back, it's not it's not ideal. So, yeah, it, um, I just I think it's I think it's interesting, and I think like I don't necessarily think this section made impact, and it's difficult to really judge that because of the lack of audience and the lack of reaction, you know, like Io Shirai coming back, not having the pop of the crowd for seeing Io Shirai. Yeah. I was like, whoa, Io Shirai's back, but it still kind of lessens it because the drama isn't there. And there's only so much on commentary. You can go, oh my God. <laughs> like people don't want to absolutely lose it in an empty room. Or I believe in the words of Tom Phillips and Byron Saxon, it was, no way, yes way, it's Io Shirai. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, God. Mean, I miss Mauro. <laughs> <laughs> he could, he'd be able to put that across pretty well. I um, want Nigel McGuinness back. Yeah, I, I think, it, you know, and it's, it's, it is hard to judge these things because obviously all the plans have seemingly changed and we should probably move on to talking about those changing plans mm, because totally. NXT TakeOver Tampa Bay it's not happening anymore, is it? Nope. That's a, <laughs> no, that's a Wrestle- big note. Yeah, WrestleMania has been moved to two nights, uh, Saturday and Sunday next week. Um, and basically, they've announced that the TakeOver Tampa Bay matches are going to be happening on regularly scheduled NXT programming on USA. So they had that whole mm-hmm. week last week where they hyped all those matches. Um, and now they're happening in a really diminished form on TV. <laughs> Brilliant. So... yeah. From this show alone, we got uh, a bit more of a lockdown on on kind of what's happening. So we got uh, lockdown intended, not really, but we've, no. we've got we've got more of a, okay. We're more locked in on. <laughs> I'm locked in. I've been locked in. Today. Yeah, I don't sure. know. It does, I don't think it matters, Pete. We're all in the <laughs> same boat. Um, and uh, yeah, so we got a bit more of a, a sort of an idea of what's going to happen. We've got the announcement that Keith Lee is going to be taking on. Dominic Dijakovic and uh, Damian Priest, as as was mm-hmm. assumed, next week for the North American title. This is after a section where Keith Lee comes out to make it known that he should apologize to Dominic Dijakovic for uh, spirit bombing him the other week after Damian mm-hmm. Priest attacked him and he all got confused and he was like, who did that? It was you. Does the power bomb? Then Priest comes out with a nightstick, tries to get involved. Keith Lee and Dominic fight over who's going to get to beat up Priest. <laughs> Dijak hits a huge dive off the ropes into because them of course on does. the palm. Yep, and he stands tall at the end. So that's that match is on the cards. Johnny and Champa uh, basically sign on the dotted line for a match in two weeks' time. In a weird, in a slightly weird section, I thought it was. I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of this segment. I'm super into seeing the match, and I really like that they're just going to be like, right, it's just you two, a referee, and a ring. Go mm-hmm. at it, because that's almost like a throwback to the first kind of Johnny Champa match, uh, not in the Cruiserweight Classic, but after they split up as DIY when it was an unsanctioned match. It was kind of a similar vibe to that, which mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of. 
wasn't a huge fan of Triple H being their dad and being just like, hey, guys, so <laughs> you've been fighting, so we're just going to have to solve this uh, this way. Uh, yeah, Triple I'm H no longer really the game, of, I'm the mediation. Yeah it, yeah, it seemed really weird to me that Triple H was just uh, was just kind of overseeing them and being like, you come in that ring and you will not touch him because I said so. You, you go sit like, in the naughty corner. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I like Johnny being the antagonist, like, don't touch me. Yes. Yeah, I, I really like Johnny in this. Yeah. It just but came thought, off really weird when Triple I, H was demeaning them down. It was weird. And I think also like the, the sort of padding of the section of things like... Um, like in wrestling, that's not how matches are made. Like normally, mm-hmm. like what would have happened before is probably at the end of their brawl, Regal would have rushed in and gone, "Oh no, it's um, it's very naughty of you. Going to have a match in three weeks' time and sort it all out once and for mm-hmm. all." But here, it really felt like they were in therapy with Triple H <laughs> as yeah. dad, and he was like, "Look, guys, I'm going to give you a match. When do you want it?" Hmm? When yeah. do you want? When do you want to have a match? Like two weeks? Was it one week? Two weeks? Three weeks? And it felt like a, it felt like a really odd negotiation to have. Like you don't see this aspect of wrestling very often, where people actually discuss what they're going to do and how they're yeah. going to do it. And so it was really weird to see this side of things. And then yeah, he's going like, "What? When? When do you want to do it?" And Johnny's like, "Oh, I don't know. Two weeks? Maybe they'll be ready by then." It's like, what? <laughs> it's so weird. And it, but it also makes me think because Triple H was like, "I'll find a building. I'll give you a mm-hmm. referee." And, we'll, and, I, and a ring, and we'll see what's happening. So I wonder if there's going to be some twist to this formula here. Like, is I the think... ring going to be somewhere really weird to finish this this feud in? Like, what feels like because this is this is it now. Like they've 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 kind of bigged up the idea that this is the end of the feud in the fact that like mm. if they touch each other, they're both out of NXT. Off like post if once this match is done, there'll be a winner decided, and they can coexist in NXT going forward triple h even says like you've both said that it's not big enough for both of you i think it is you're both going to be here but if you ever pick up this feud again you're out um that was that was another thing that i really didn't like about this it was triple h just being like oh you guys and your bloody feud you've made us so much money how dare you (laughs) like it was really like playing down that they shouldn't be feuding i was like why this is like the best feud in nxt history why are you running it down like they should stop fighting it was it was weird. I, di- I didn't. You I guys didn't get shouldn't it, but... do the wrestling. You know what? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Guys, just do the wrestling. Can you just stop wrestling, please. All um, we've been trying to do is a friendship club here for years, and you guys have been know, ruining yeah. it. Uh, we'll, we'll come on to this bit now, and then we'll go through kind of the rest of the changes on the card, just because this kind of fits in with what we're talking mm-hmm. about. But the segment ended with a vignette of uh, Killer Cross, uh, what had been speculated to be Killer Cross weeks. Now this was actually mm-hmm. confirmed because Killer Cross was actually in the vignette that played at the end. It was a three, the three of them, Triple H, Johnny, and Champa, just standing in the ring, then be like, "It's two weeks." Blah 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 blah. Match made. And then this vignette just starts playing on the Tron and uh, they all turn around and watch it. It's more same of the apocalyptic imagery like we've been seeing before, but into it thrown into that was kind of images of killer cross flashing up here, there and everywhere. TikTok coming up. And then the final shot is just like the minute hand on a clock, just turning to 12 and then it just cuts to black. And that's the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. The doomsday so, clock reaches midnight. Exactly. Yes. So I think with this stipulation that he's going to go to a location with a ring, I think it's going to get kind of the the more cinematic vibe to it. It's not just going to mm-hmm. be them filming a match. It's going to be a cinematic thing. And I think that's going to allow them to do something with Killer Cross in that match. I think he's going to come in and maybe interrupt it or disrupt it or something like that. But they'll make it look like this epic apocalyptic huge thing with Killer Cross with all these special effects and stuff going on with mm-hmm. it. Um, so I think that's how they're going to get out of not having the feud end between the two and having Killer Cross immediately inserted into the main event. So they can still do the Johnny Champa final blow off match when there's actually a crowd and a big takeover stage rather than on, on an episode of NXT. But they're going to yeah. shift forward Killer Cross's debut to interrupt. That would be my my theory anyway. Yeah, and imagine he then I imagine they probably have him injure one of them, mm. He'd injure one of them and then start beef with the other one until uh whichever one goes out injured comes back and then they can sort mm-hmm. of do this rotation. I want I wonder in this scenario as well is, whether he's going to be an agent of Triple H. Ooh. Cuz I cuz like one I think one interesting thing is obviously Triple H has been heavily involved in a lot of the WWE programming recently. He basically did a whole smackdown on his own from seemingly from the camera work to the editing to the yeah. <laughs> to the in-ring announcing. Um 
And he's done this. He's now appeared on NXT as well. And obviously, like this is them trying to use his star power, I guess, to prop up the the company and also the fact that he has to be there anyway. So he might as well be used as an on-screen talent in this regard. But then it makes me wonder whether like they might to bolster the brand for the next however long they're going to be locked down for, however long they can't really run live shows, which is going to be longer than I think even the, you know, like the lockdown runs for of people being asked to stay at home. Like even when we're Mm -hmm. allowed to go out again, huge public gatherings might still be limited. So there's that, there's that idea that, you know, you could start to use triple H as a proper on screen guy with killer cross as his in ring agent. I wonder, it's just, I just think that might be something they look into doing. I don't know if I want to see triple H as an authority figure again, especially not, not as a heel one. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm, not a huge fan of that, especially when they already have such a good authority figure in William Regal, who's just kind of mm-hmm. there and makes matches and he doesn't really insert himself in too many ways. I really like that kind of dynamic they have, so I wouldn't want them to change that. And I would think that this segment on this show would have been with Regal if they could have had him there. Um, True. So, but I, so I think Triple H was just kind of the de facto Regal for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm not as into that. I, I don't think. I just want yeah, I Killer Cross to kind of come in and just be awesome and just go on a rampage by mm. himself because he's a untamed SOB or whatever. He's just kind of a, a huge destructive force and disrupts the whole balance of NXT and all that stuff. That I think that would be much more enticing. With his videos of what outside's like now that we haven't yeah, been I there know. for a week. Crazy. That's yeah. what his vignettes are. It's just a glimpse into the future. It's all buzzards <laughs> and tumbleweeds. <laughs> ab- abandoned Tesco's. <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems quite on the nose now. Apocalyptic yeah, it imagery. Does. It's like, yeah, it really does. that's a bit it's a bit touchy, isn't it? Yeah, well, thank um, God it's not Dean Ambrose doing his uh you've all got germs thing from a, oh, a year God, ago. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out with a gas mask. Yeah. Jesus. Getting bet- shots from the day, disgusting people. <laughs> Yeah, terrible. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm but, just saying uh, WWE's got foresight. They know what's happening. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's like the yeah. Simpsons. They predict everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so that was the the ending segment. But some of the other uh, changes we've got, we had uh, more people confirmed for the women's ladder match, mm-hmm. uh, the number one contendership ladder match. That's also happening in two weeks along this, in the same episode as the Gargano Champa one. Uh, we've got five people confirmed for it now, which is, oh, bear with me, we've got Io Shirai, mm-hmm. we've got Candice LeRae, we've got Chelsea, others, Green. Chelsea Green, Tegan Knox, mm-hmm. and I can't remember. I can Google someone it. <laughs> Google it. Fill for I'll time. I'll Google it. Fill for um, time, Pete. Yes, Googling. but the the sixth person um, is actually going to be decided by all of the losers from the qualifying matches. Um, so it's going to be. Uh, all the people that have lost, so people like Shotzi Blackheart, Dakota Kai, mm-hmm. um, Caden Carter that we saw in this episode, uh, Aaliyah is also there. Um, they're all going to be in a gauntlet match next week to determine the sixth spot, which would be cool. And then they are going to still have the full-blown ladder match. Um, as but Oh, is it Mia Yim? Is she it's in me. It? It's me. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got it. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the the last qualifying spot will be determined next week in a gauntlet match. And then they're still doing the full blown ladder match in the episode in two weeks time. So I I feel like the episode in two weeks time is kind of going to be the big NXT episode with this big ladder match. Mm -hmm. And with the Gargano Champa stuff, that's going to be an episode to to look out for, I think. And then you have stuff next week being the last qualifying match and you've got the triple threat North American title match. So we've got all of these kind of matches dispersed here, there and everywhere, but it does look Mm -hmm. like, the tag team championship match has just been disbanded because you can't have Pete Dunne, who's yeah. one of your champions. Um, are they you, can do Riddle, you can say Riddle's injured as well now, probably. Yeah, yeah, you can do um, lots of things with that. Are yeah, they going to so- have to vacate the straps because, you know, defending for 30 days, that rule that they like to bring up sometimes and not? Mm. I don't know. Like, I, th- I don't think I don't I don't uh, think anyone would care at this exact moment. No, exactly. time. Like they, you know, like they're also not really doing a hell of a lot of proper wrestling on the wrestling shows. So, yeah, it's that's kind it. of. I think you know. I think what's interesting about the the new setup of having ha- having NXT now sort of bookending Mania weekend in the fact that we're going to have some of the matches that we're going to be at Tampa Bay next week, and we're going to have some the week after. It means that for one of the first times ever, like uh, NXT's big matches 
are essentially going to main event the week of WrestleMania in that mm. sense. Like we're going to have already had SmackDown, we're going to have had Raw, and then we're going to have the big matches from NXT going on on Wednesday. So that means like if we get an Adam Cole match or we get Champa versus Gargano, and that's really big, that's going to be the lasting memory that people have. It's not going to be like, you know, ruined by... Roman Reigns retiring The Undertaker or whatever happens at other WrestleManias. <laughs> you know? Like, um, it's actually going to be like NXT gets to sort of cap the week off. So that's mm. quite interesting. I think that will be quite yeah. a, a novel thing for hardcore NXT fans to experience. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I think it'll be, it'll be cool to have it as its own thing, to not be overshadowed by mania the day after mm. and I, I think kind of that's generally the the theme they want to go for with having takeovers not joined to a big wwe show from now on as well when they started mm -hmm. doing it at portland as well so i i think they do want nxt to stand on its own two legs a bit more yeah um and this is actually gonna help it i think a little bit uh in, in that sense which would be really cool um, i think it's really odd though not to move those like not to move those matches onto the wrestlemania card Mm. So move, like some of them definitely should have just got bumped straight into WrestleMania. I think when you said we're going to do a two nighter and reduce the crews and stuff, they could have just done Champ and Gargano at Mania. It's they true. could do you know if Adam Cole's not self isolating, they could do Adam Cole. Um, but it seems like it's nice play, to be fair, yeah. But like you yeah. should put some of those matches on the Mania card now, like rather than just and obviously that takes away a little bit of the prestige of the women's title being defended there, mm. but. Uh, I think it, I think that would have been a more a, a better choice to give things that little that feeling of prestige rather than just being like, well, we're just back on TV again, are we? Yeah. Because um, like, and I think the other thing is that because it, obviously there's no crowd, every all the matches are being worked pretty damn safely for the most part. So like, it's gone back to that feeling that a lot of like the old weekly NXT used to have, where because people were performing three or four times a night in the tapings, um, just on different episodes, like. 90% of the matches were squash matches and then you would get your big like at the end of the night they do their big uh their big finale match with somebody because then they can obviously go back and recover I guess yeah um and that feels like that's kind of what's happening here everyone's doing quite a hit the few hit a few moves do a few big spots but nothing crazy crazy is happening when NXT yeah. on TV you know, like th th think back to two weeks ago at the Performance Center when that was like that was more of a booking and a scheduling issue that led them out of full sale and had to be at the Performance Center for that fans night. How crazy that was. Mm. And that Champa Gargano section where they smashed up the whole backstage and they jumped off of the, the crow's nest and stuff like none of that's even featured in NXT. Yeah, it's just and obviously like more more power to them for for making the right choices and and reducing the crew and doing things safely and like taking the burden off uh medical workers i guess because you don't mm, want to be injured yeah, totally. now do you we have to go to the hospital so like it all yeah makes sense it just makes for a very strange product to watch yeah i mean i, I i'm assuming on these bigger shows and the big matches they're still going to kind of pull out the stops as they they mm -hmm should really do for a big like you know six woman ladder match and for the end quote unquote of gargano and champa and for a big triple threat match for the north american title you'd think yeah. these are still going to be pretty big matches but i think the rest of them they just kind of go please don't get injured it's the last thing we need right now please be safe man it must be so hard to g yourself up for going through like being power bombed onto a ladder or fall off the Ugh. top of one with no crowd making any noise whatsoever Oh yeah, that would be like all the yeah. respect in the world when these spots are gonna like if these spots are gonna happen because it must be so hard to get that adrenaline pumping to be like, yeah, okay, cool, I'm gonna, I'm ready for this now. <laughs> yeah, without a crowd to be like, yes, please do this. Yeah, yeah, please don't die, yeah. please don't die, please don't like, die. Oh, let's yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Man. Um, but uh, we'll quickly go through uh, what else happened on this show because there were tons of matches and they mm -hmm. did not last very long uh it started off with tyler breeze versus austin theory uh which was set up a, a few weeks ago when they had their little tete-a-tete -tete at the uh, at the mm -hmm. performance center um and surprisingly for this one well for me anyway tyler breeze got the win um, yeah I didn't, theory, I didn't really get that yeah austin theory got a bit too cocky for this one he was saying i'm the future you're the past pretty much repeatedly throughout the match and then he <laughs> grant, went to get tyler breeze's phone started taking a, a video with it and just being like, just wanted you to have this on your phone because I'm the future, you're the past, aren't I great? And then Tyler Breeze hit the beauty shot and won. 
Um, so I like the story they're telling of Austin Theory being too cocky. So I, I'm thinking that maybe they might have another match uh, a few weeks down the line. Mm -hmm. And Austin Theory will get the win, but this time he'll be a lot more serious. He won't be so cocky, and that would be like a development of character for him, maybe. Yeah. I mean, and this is the injection of character that I think he needed, right? Like, you know, he's had mm -hmm. he's had showcased matches already with Champa and a few other people, and it's this is the first time he's really, I feel like, stepped out as like what even just even just sort of picking a lane to be like, you know, I'm at least this side of the heel face divide. You know, I, yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a not really a heel, but I'm I'm cocky and a bit ruthless, and I'm I'm willing to show you that I think I'm better than you, and that leads you to go like oh, I kind of get who he is now. Before he was just a very yes. good wrestler who named all of his things space things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but at least now he has a character. Mm -hmm. um, uh, after that, we had a quick match between Killian Dane and the debuting Tahuti Miles. Tahuti Miles, uh, very interesting character. He's a former U.S. Army vet. He wore camo dungarees, and oh, he's dead. He's dead now. So yeah, uh, he died. Um, well, oh well, that's know. a shame. It was weird to me. He seemed very kind of Velveteen Dream esque, like early Dream, because mm -hmm. he had like very similar kind of glasses. Uh, when he went in the ring, he did like the spinning thing with his arms out that Dream does, and then he was being all like, you know, touching his face and being all like, "Oh, I'm pretty," and it's like that really reminds me of like early Velveteen Dream. Mm. It's, it was a strange, weird like comparison, but hey ho, he didn't last very long. Killian Dame murdered him. <laughs> um, he was trying and to be then, fast, and he wasn't fast enough. <laughs> he was not fast enough. Uh, after that, we had Karen Grimes versus Tony Nese in what was a, a fine match. Uh, Cameron Grimes hit the cave-in from out of nowhere mm -hmm. uh, and got the win, which was cool. Um, we had uh, the uh, Zia Lee versus Aaliyah qualification match. Zia Lee was attacked backstage. Probably Aaliyah did it. I see, I, I see. Tried, I mean, I yeah, because... They didn't make enough of Aaliyah telling the referee to be like, well, she can't come out. I win. I win. De facto, I win. And then they were like, oh, we're just yeah. getting word that someone else is cleared to compete and it's yeah. Io Shirai. But then maybe it was Io Shirai. I don't know. Maybe I think it was Io Shirai, yeah. It's likely Shirai to have been back. Aaliyah, but it doesn't really make much yeah. sense. Yeah. Apart from saying, I don't like, know. beef in the ladder match, I guess. Like, a, a, way, a way of taking those two know. out of the ladder match is sort of baked in now because uh, uh, Zaylee and Aaliyah can fight mm. over sorry in the gauntlet match Zaylee and Aaliyah can sort of fight over um yeah that, that gives makes a sense. little bit of heat to that showdown yeah um but yeah Shirai Shirai came back she was working face I want to say maybe just because she was against the Leah I don't know if this is supposed to be like a face turn for her she's like oh she's mm. been away for a while she was injured she's back and now she's really cool again I don't know um but uh, I think she yeah, just destroyed her too quickly to really get a sense right like it was just it was mm, just totally. complete destruction and over she was still like babbling when she got on the uh turnbuckle at the end she was like raving and shouting stuff so I feel like she's still the same Io Shirai we just don't know I hope so yet. yeah I think yeah. like they I think they were very happy with that character so they'll stick with it mm -hmm. yeah oh, yeah totally uh we got a very quick Dexter Loomis vignette of mm -hmm. him it was just shots of him and then it was like he has eyes okay what cool. you couldn't see was all the sort of plastic sheeting in the room behind him and <laughs> <laughs> the cleanup stuff the but the body's already in the bags <laughs> oh, um crazy. yeah we, we had the uh, the keith lee segment that we mentioned earlier we had birch and lorkin versus thorn and vink and birch and lorkin got the win with dual submissions which i thought was cool candace array and caden carter laray won with the gargano escape uh, Matt Riddle and Roderick Strong, which Riddle won and the new team debuted. And then we had the Gargano and Champa and Triple H segment mm -hmm. to end the show. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that there's wrestling on it. Yeah. It's better, better than last week, put it that mm -hmm. way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I like the fact that they are, in fact, wrestling now. Even if the matches are short, even if they're safe, it's, it's much better than just having video packages to hype up their matches. And I'm really looking forward to the next couple of weeks because I think some of these big matches are going to be really, really, really bloody good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm I'm perfectly content with this episode. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is just a shame, isn't it? That we, yeah, were, we it were on the cusp of like the biggest event of the year and all of this has happened. But I think they are making the best with what they're given and doing totally. a really, really good job. And the, and there were some, you know, the the longer ma the two longer matches here, Austin Theory and Tyler Breeze and Riddle and Strong, were really, really fun and really good. Mm -hmm. And everyone else came out and did their big flashy moves, which, to be fair, was what they were doing before they went live on USA so 
is there really much yeah. complaining to do? Because it's basically gone back to being old style NXT. Mm -hmm. um, so what more do you want? Exactly, yeah. Mm. Um, I think that's everything to go over if you want to do the outro. Yeah, right? yeah. so well, there, there you have it. That is uh, our review-ish of NXT this week. Please Ish. get the videos that have appeared on the screen somewhere to much more awesome WrestleTalk stuff. I've been El Fakador. That, yeah, that's Pete. There's Pete. Here he is. There's Pete. Nope, I'm going the oh, wrong way. Wait, hang on. Oh, yeah. you could have done it like it was my thumb was your <laughs> thumb there. Look. <laughs> do it. Point at yourself. Wait, no, point at side. myself? Other hand. This way. Yeah, and then bring it uh, this way. Oh, no, wait. Uh, I'll bring mine back. And uh, wait, so there, you, there you go. That's Pete there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was that was wrestling. Yeah, it was.